We did it. Yeah, yeah. I think we did it. You actually did it. So what exactly is that Nomad Project? To catch everyone up to speed, last year during Disney Investor Day, they dropped a bunch of news about new Marvel movies and shows. After that, they went ahead and registered trademarks for the upcoming series like Ironheart, I Am Groot, Secret Invasion, and more. But they also snagged a trademark for something we haven't heard about yet, Marvel Studios' Nomad. People had a lot of theories about what this could be, whether it's a movie or a secret Disney Plus show. Since the timing was similar to when they kept the Book of Boba Fett under wraps, some figured they might have decided to hold off on announcing it. Similar to Wonder Man, as even though there wasn't a major announcement for Wonder Man, the show's production wrapped up and featured some big names like Yahya Abdul-Mateen II and Destin Daniel Cretton, who's known for Shang-Chi. It seems like Nomad could be in a similar situation. The closest we've seen to Nomad in the movies was Steve Rogers in Infinity War. So when Variety reported that Chris Evans was coming back for a new MCU film, people thought it could be for that. But then it went quiet. I started thinking it might be related to Deadpool and Wolverine, since Chris Evans showed up as Johnny Storm in that movie and got taken out pretty quickly. According to Deadpool, that was all about the budget, which might explain things. If they want to create a whole series with Chris Evans leading it, it wouldn't be budget-friendly at all, so they could go for a different actor to play Nomad and still keep it true to the comics. If you didn't know, there have been several characters who have taken on the Nomad mantle, but none are really memorable outside of the original. The most famous one is definitely Steve Rogers. There's also Edward Ferbel, who got killed off just three issues after he showed up. Then there's Jack Monroe, the only one who had some prominence as one of Cap's former sidekicks. Ricky Barnes is another one. She's Bucky's granddaughter from Counter-Earth or something like that. Lastly, there's Ian Rogers, the most recent nomad, who I think has some connection to Zemo or something. It's pretty convoluted. Some folks speculated that this could be either Bucky or Walker's next role after Falcon and the Winter Soldier. But now that Walker is US agent and Bucky is likely tied up with Captain America 4 and Thunderbolts, it's all become a bit unclear again. What I really want is for this show to focus on Jack Monroe's version of Nomad. It would be the perfect way to introduce the character keep things street level and allow them to cast a really talented actor with a great crew. That combination can lead to an awesome series about him. Jack Monroe has a really fascinating backstory. He was born in Naugatuck, Connecticut and became an adventurer teaming up with William Burnside, who took on the identity of Steve Rogers in the 1950s. They operated together as Bucky and Captain America for a while, but ended up being put in suspended animation. When they were finally awakened decades later, they were a bit delusional and tried to take out the original Captain America and the Falcon. Eventually, they were captured again and sent back into suspended animation. Burnside later gets revived and brainwashed by the psychologist Dr. Faustus, turning him into the fascistic Grand Director, the leader of the National Force. While under Faustus' control, Burnside shoots and seemingly kills his former partner Bucky, However, Faustus and Burnside are ultimately defeated by the original Captain America and Daredevil, leading to Burnside's suicide. It's then revealed that Faustus had actually loaded the gun with blanks, planning to use Monroe in a future plot that never happened. Monroe ends up in S.H.I.E.L.D. custody and appears to be cured of his psychotic symptoms. After that, he seeks out Steve Rogers and dons a Bucky costume to help take down the female terrorist Viper. Eventually, Monroe is given Roger's former Nomad identity and suits up as Nomad to battle Viper alongside Captain America. Monroe then goes on to fight against the Slayer. Nomad then became Captain America's partner and fought against the Sisters of Sin. As Bucky, he also faced off against Baron Zemo in a psychological battle. Nomad played a key role in helping Captain America defeat the Red Skull, a showdown in which the Red Skull seemingly met his end. After completing a successful solo mission to capture the deranged Madcap, Nomad decided to part ways with Captain America. Later on, he got a new costume and teamed up with Captain America to take down the Slug, dismantling his criminal empire. Nomad made a comeback after Steve Rogers was stripped of the Captain America title by the Commission on Superhuman Activities. Although Rogers continued to fight crime under the identity of the Captain, he wore a black version of his usual costume, 
and traveled the country battling evil alongside his former partners, including Nomad, Demolition Man, and The Falcon. The group also included Nomad's then-girlfriend Vagabond, who was a newcomer to the hero scene. During this storyline, Nomad was portrayed as a bit of a hothead and didn't like Demolition Man from the start, especially since there seemed to be some chemistry between Vagabond and Demolition Man. Nomad had a showdown with Vibro. When a group from the Serpent Society, led by the terrorist Viper, tried to poison the water supply in Washington, D.C., the captain and his crew jumped in to stop them. During all the chaos, Nomad, Vagabond, and Demolition Man got captured by the commission and thrown in jail. But then Sidewinder, the former leader of the Serpent Society, used his teleportation powers to bust in and free Diamondback, another society member who had stayed loyal to him and helped the captain against Viper, so he ended up in jail too. Sidewinder offered to help free the other heroes, but Vagabond and Demolition Man refused, thinking it was wrong to run from the law. Nomad rolled his eyes at that and decided to break out with Sidewinder and Diamondback, which ended his friendship with Vagabond. Later, the captain asked Nomad for help, but when he found him drunk at a bar, Nomad didn't want to get involved, especially after learning that Rogers planned to turn himself in. They parted ways on a sour note. Going solo, Nomad started a fight against drug dealer Umberto Cefilios and even ditched his spandex for a more urban vigilante look. He kidnapped a baby girl from her drug-addicted mother and named her Bucky. The Commission on Superhero Activities began to keep an eye on him and teamed up with the military to send Steve Rogers, who was back in his Captain America role, to try and take Nomad down. In a firefight, Nomad took out Cephelios, along with a few drug dealers and government officials. He then hit the road, tackling issues that superheroes usually don't deal with, like AIDS, homelessness, and hate crimes. At one point, Monroe spent quite a while in Los Angeles. While he was there, Nomad got loosely connected with the Undergrounders, a network of folks across America who help each other out when needed. This connection gave Nomad access to reliable babysitters for Bucky when he had to dive into situations that were way too dangerous for her, though a lot of people think Nomad's life is always risky. During this time, he started shedding his previous bitter and self-destructive habits, becoming a more easygoing and caring person. Eventually, Nomad began to worry that he or Bucky might have HIV, Bucky because of her background and Nomad due to his medical care from the undergrounders. He decided to get both of them tested, but it was never revealed if either of them was actually infected. Nomad also teamed up with the Punisher and Daredevil to take on a bunch of criminal organizations, during the Infinity Crusade, he was one of the many superheroes who traveled into space, but he didn't do much besides hang around with Forge while the action was happening. At one point, he even confronted an evil clone of Gambit that got lost on the way to the fight. Around this time, Nomad was recruited by Doctor Strange to help battle Lilin, a powerful ancient queen who posed a demonic threat. While on the road, Nomad faced off against the hate monger, Man-Thing, and even Bucky's mother, who had been brainwashed and turned into an assassin sent to kill him. This assassin training was orchestrated by the Favor Broker, a villain who caused Nomad a lot of trouble throughout his series. Overall, Nomad has a lot of great stories and an amazing origin story to make a dramatic and action-packed storyline that would make for an exciting screen adaptation. Now let me know what you think in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel to get updated regularly with the latest update. Thank you so much for watching our video and we'll see you at the next one.